I'm your host, Regen Ray. And today I'm so excited to dig deeper into our wonderful world of soils. I am joined by Woody, who's joining us from the Central Coast. We're both in lockdown. How are you going over there? <laughs> hey, good day, Ray. It's great to speak to you today. I'm doing well today. Doing well today. Excellent, excellent. Well, I know that you've had a very interesting journey around soil and you've integrated it with your music journey. So I really want to, you know, let you explain to the soil lovers how you became interested and a little bit about yourself and how you fit in and even into the community project that you're working on. Of course, yeah. Um, well, it's a, a funny story, really. Um, music's always been a passion of mine. Um, my, my dad's a, a musician by trade and that's where I got the bug from originally. Uh, and really there's no getting rid of it once you've got it. So the great thing is that he always tells me is music will always wait for you. So even though, uh, I found myself, uh, not really being too creative with music at the moment, what I am finding myself giving a voice to is, uh, is soil at the moment. I have just become so enthusiastic and passionate about the health and learning all about soil, uh, and representing what the life, all the life that's beneath our feet, um, especially in terms of uh, food waste and, and composting um, has become a, a, my, my biggest interest, uh, so much so that I've, I put my hand up and, and leapt outside the box of my uh, comfortab comfortability and uh, have now taken up a position uh, which I, I've coined the, the role of MC microbe. So I'm, I'm giving a voice to the creative arts and also to the, the soil life there uh, oh. in, an, in a community garden setting. Yeah, I love that. And so, and, and I, I am totally with you. The, the bug of uh, soil is definitely got me and, uh, and you've got this overlap of music. I can't say I'm very musically talented, um, but uh, I, I'm keen to hear some of your music. And, and, and can you just share that, that moment? Like what got you excited in soil and then your passion for music? You went, oh, this is a bit of an intersection that I can put two of my passions together. Do you remember that time? Like how long ago was it and what did it feel like? Yeah, um, it's hard to pinpoint, but I do my best. I think uh, it was when I was had a book, uh, got given a book for a birthday, uh, which is how to grow food anywhere, and I was able to to build a a DIY worm farm from a wheelie bin, essentially nice. from the instructions in the book, and we just started processing all of our food waste and just the 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 sheer fact of halving the the red bin at the end of each week not having to take it out to the top of our really steep driveway um <laughs> made me just want that that made made me very excited um and it was from that moment really that my my focus shifted really towards okay there's so much more going on here i started to see all the little tiny bits of life you know the little things moving around they're just the ones that I can see with my eye, obviously, but they, that was enough. That was enough for me to think, oh, this is actually magic what's happening here. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of where it intersected with music, I think um, that has probably been with a community garden project uh, called Swamp here on the Central Coast. Uh, as Costa uh, coined the term, it's a backronym. So the, the name was made up before the meaning. So it means... Uh, Sustainable Wetlands Agricultural Makers Project. And my role in there is really seeing, uh, having the vision, a shared vision with the, the rest of the core members. Uh, specifically for me, it's about how I can bring the creative industries into the garden, uh, whether that be through art, through music, uh, sculpture, you know, all, all the different sorts of uh, avenues there. Yeah, I, I love that. And so what, what inspires your music? Like, are you writing lyrics? Um, you share a little bit of like what that inspiration looks like. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I've always been a, a songwriter, um, whether it's just jotting lyrics down. Uh, it always happens differently. You know, sometimes you get a melody first. Um, mm. Tom Waits tells a great story, a singer-songwriter, Tom Waits, American fella. Um, he, you know, you, they just you just channel them from some other place. And sometimes you have to, you have to look up. He tells a great story. He's driving along the highway and he actually had this great 
Melody come in and he said, and he looked up and he just said, look, just, they have to wait, <laughs> come back to me when I'm in the studio tomorrow. You know? <laughs> and he was able to come, come back to him when he was in the studio the next day. Um, so there's really sometimes no control over uh, that creativeness. It's just coming from somewhere else. And if you're, you're, if you're in the right place, then uh, you're lucky. So yeah. I always try and make sure to have um, something that I can write with or play with on around me. Um, there's a, a piano, not mine, but I've got access to it at the moment. So it's great. I can noodle around on that or the guitar or just sing, a, sing in, the, in the shower or in the car, who knows? <laughs> I love that. And I think that's really an important point there that like a little bit of it is intuition. You know, it it just kind of comes to you. There's no real plan overthinking. It just kind of pops out in, in, you know, out of the sky. And uh, I think, you know, when we're in tune and it's quite interesting how you say that this person looked up where, you know, you're probably looking down for inspiration into the ground and seeing like how you can find words and lyrics that kind of shed some light on this wonderful world that's beneath our feet. So as you've been doing this music, what has been something that kind of like just blew your mind when you started learning about the soil and the, and the life in it? Yeah. um, I guess something that's blown my mind is the discovery of, um, I think called lactobacillus, which is just a naturally occurring uh, bacteria in that's everywhere, you know, on the surface of the earth and how that's been used uh, and utilized by a lot of people around the world, um, often in the, the poorer, poorer parts of the world where they really uh, are able to capture it and then use it to its full potential. Um, I think that's, that's probably been the biggest, uh, the biggest thing for me, along with, of course, um, Worms in general, they they blow my mind every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And share with us what those benefits are um, from that. Like, how how are some of the uses? Yeah, um, for the lactobacillus, um, being able to capture it uh, out out of the the atmosphere, um, and then you, you're using like a, a rice a rice mixture there with water. Simply, that's it in a jar. Um, is able to draw it in, and you capture it in the jar. Uh, let it begin to to ferment uh, in the jar there, and you know you're you're cultivating uh, at basically the start of a, an inoculation, which you mm-hmm. is later processed into a, a compost um, inoculant, um, which completely changes uh, the traditional uh, use of a, of a compost or, or method, I should say. Um, and yeah, that that is is mind blowing. The benefits of that, you know. Um, are pretty incredible. Something that's freely in our air can be drawn down with a very simple technique and then used in our composting setups. And so like, you know, this is where it blows my mind because it's like some of the answers is right there in front of us. We might not see them, but we don't need to go and buy products. We don't need to complicate it. We don't need a 700 steps to success, you know, checklist, you know. It's, that's it's, so true. I've always been, uh, <laughs> I'll say a cheapskate <laughs> or a bargain, <laughs> a bargain hunter. So when I heard about this one, uh, you know, it was, I didn't have to, to scrape out my pockets or anything for it. You know, it was just there and I could just capture it with what I had already at hand. So couldn't yeah. ask for better. Pure innovation. And so I, I know that on the Swamp Community Project, you have been running some workshops and I've seen some amazing photos and uh, your community involvement. Tell us a little bit about the spice compost. And uh, I really want you to share the story about how you put everyone's name on the sign. I think that was very magical. So share about like <laughs> that community element and yeah, how it all yeah. comes together and what it feels like to be in a community space like that. Yeah. Uh, well, um, yeah, la- elaborating on the the lactobacillus element there that is the start of this spice compost method um which has been built upon uh many people's knowledge but how i came across it was through uh jerry gillespie um he's got a great book there which i'll give a free plug to because it's a good one uh, it's called the waste between our ears and jerry uh i actually listened to a, a podcast first an acres podcast that uh interviewed jerry and I just decided to email him um, because, you know, just go straight to the source. And, you know, like you said, you don't know till you don't ask, right? Um, and Jerry wrote back uh, within a day. Um, thanks, Jerry. And we just got talking there. And I was able to sort of, um, he's, he's all about, you know, sharing, making it common knowledge for, pe- for people. So it's, it's accessible to anyone via his website. 
Um, so I, there was no, no stopping me really. Um, I was able to get all that knowledge um, and test it, of course, in, in the backyard first. And when I think I had a bit of an idea, I just set up uh, some shelters, set up, put a few hay bales for seats and put bums on, bums on there. And then uh, the weather held off for us and we just got there. So I got a whole bunch of um, food scraps from local cafes. Um, what else we had? We had some hay, we had wood chips, we had leftover compost from when the garden uh, had previously been activated. And what turned out uh, to be a first time for me, um, was a great experience, you know. Uh, I, I probably <laughs> I had had some I had to de uh, dedicate someone there to to pull me up if I was just going too fast or you know for anything like that because the nerves were kicking in. But I think we were okay, and what we ended up with was a huge, huge community uh, pile that was built off our off our backs and our hard yakka and um, shovels in hand, and you know a big range from from little toddlers to to experienced farmers, I think, came from the local area. It was such a big mixing pot. Um, and I think I really wanted to represent that. You know, I thought it's one thing for someone to come into the garden. Um, it's another thing for them to see who's actually been there before them uh, and who's built the things that are there. And so it just made sense to knock up a sign and stick that on there and uh, let everyone know, you know, that they, it was really appreciated that they mm -hmm. attended that workshop. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. I, 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 I slightly, you know, I, I, I choke up just thinking about it because it's like the energy that's there yeah, that yeah, brings yeah. people together. And, you know, a lot of people like, like just your, your, um, you know, to get out of your comfort zone and do something and like only be like a few steps ahead of some that the people in that group and just put bay, you know, hails of bay down for seats and hope that the weather, you know, holds out. Like that is just like real um, resilience and, you know, mother nature has that naturally. And I feel like it's so nice to see the human race catching up to that as well. And us as, you know, teachers and educators being able to just create that space that people can be involved and create a little bit of magic um, and then be appreciated, you know, and, and, you know, like that, when I saw that sign and I saw that, that post go up on Instagram, I just thought, well, wow, this is like change makers in the process, you know, and like all those people go back and tell someone, and that's the ripple effect that we need. It's inclusive, you know? Um, I, 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 I just love that kind of all inclusiveness. And I, I see photos that it's all age groups that are hanging out yeah. in this community garden. So it's like, you know, we don't even know what some of the ideas of these people will have in five years time that might've been because they attended that workshop. And so kudos yeah. to you for putting it together and, and creating that space and with the whole team at, at Swamp, you know? Yeah. You know, Swamp is all about cultivating community uh, and bringing people together. You know, that's what it's, what it's all about growing good, good nutritious food, like any garden is. Um, and so to have people come from as far as Sydney, you know, an hour and a half, two hours away for the workshop, um, blew, blew my mind. It really did blow my mind. Um, and it's definitely something that I, I would like to do again when we can. Yeah, absolutely. And I think now I know back then we, you weren't going through the lockdown that we currently we went and that's why I took the opportunity to come to Sydney and just get away from Melbourne a little bit. Um, but now is more the time that people need this in their life, that, you know, something to look forward to an event, something that can help them be a little bit more resourceful and reduce waste and, um, and, uh, and, 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 and be a bit more, um, humble in the process as well, you know, less consume, more produce, you know, That's it. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing. You know, you probably find too, um, and all, all of the, the soil lovers that are watching this now, you know, the more that you, that you make an effort to, to know the soil, to, to learn about the soil, the more you, you open up about yourself and, and it mm. just brings you with like-minded people. And it's just incredible, the relationships that develop, isn't it? It's totally addictive and very uh, fulfilling as well. Yes. You know, it's definitely an addiction I want more of. And that's why <laughs> I started the podcast and have lovely conversations like this. Um, Woody, I'd love to, do I call you Woody or do I have to call you MC Microbe now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, call me, call me Woody. That's all right. <laughs> I kind of really want to go like MC Microbe in the house. Yeah. <laughs> So one I'll, day we're running I'll an event. I to you. <laughs> <laughs> also, I want to I want to dig a little bit deeper into the word regenerative. I get a lot of mixed um, opinions about what this word means, and I really love the fact that maybe it's not a definable word. So I'm curious to know what does the word regenerative mean to you? Yeah, great question. 
Um, for me, I have come across the word through listening to, to podcasts um, and, and reading books and researching uh, on the net of, of farmers that are doing such and uh, attending workshops too. And I think for me, regenerative uh, specifically is just about uh, nourishing something that's been malnourished to a state where it is at, at its natural um, natural self, you know, where, where it's functioning at its best. Um, and I think looking around, it is evident that things have been malnourished and are treated unfairly. Uh, and they need, they need a lot of a TLC, you know, a lot of tender love and care. So um, it's, it's implementing all those practices, uh, which at the core uh, are bringing them back up to their, their ultimate health there. Mm. I, I love that the sense of balance too you know yeah i love that distinction of like it once was nourished and now it's malnourished and we can bring it back you know because i think sometimes people see this as like something new and we have to like repair and rebuild and create and extend but maybe it's not about that as much it's also about like understanding that something was in a good state and based on the way that we've probably lived our lives and, and kind of taken more than what we've given, it's become depleted or it's, you know, malnourished and we can bring that back, you know, with a lot of, yeah. you know, not a lot, yeah. we're just a little bit of TLC sometimes soils and Look, it, it wants to get there as much as we want it to get there, you know? So it's really, uh, I don't think it'd take too much really. A little bit of maybe like getting out of the way. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just step back sometimes. <laughs> absolutely you know the old rule of less is more you know the less we try and intervene with the natural system the more it kind of heals itself and the david edinburgh a witness statement on netflix is a true testament of that when he goes and visits uh the 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 chernobyl site and you can just see life thriving there even though humans can't go there yeah. because humans can't go there it's kind of green and trees are growing and mother nature is absorbing the buildings and the concrete jungle that was there and you know, yeah. mother nature is resilient and knows how to win, you know, and can sure repair, <laughs> you know, so I, I do, I do love that as a, as an example. Um, I want to, I want to shift gears a little bit. I want to talk about your music a bit more. Let's go, um, yeah. I, I want, I want like, what are some of the lyrics or the words or like, what's something that like, what are some of the titles of your songs and uh, yeah. talk a little bit about the music and yeah. the band and how many members and where you, you play gigs. <laughs> yeah. So it, music started for me uh, with, with my dad, um, and I guess I, I, the first instrument that I picked up was a, uke, a ukulele after I used to work uh, as a, um, a dishwasher in uh, a live music venue uh, that had amazing acts come through. Uh, and one of those acts was Jake Shimabakuru, who's a uh, Hawaiian uh, ukulele player. Incredible, incredible uh, what he plays and what he does on that. It's, it's insane. It's mind blowing as much as the soil is sometimes, you know? <laughs> and uh, I, that was the first instrument I picked up purely because the neck could fit in my, my tiny hand at the time and it was easy to play. And so I just learned from watching videos, uh, moved to a guitar teacher and on, on the side, you know, once I was able to get a few chords together, that's when the, the melody started to happen for me. And, it didn't really matter what the lyrics were at the time at that early stage. If I thought it sounded good, I, I wrote it down and I, I, I tended to visualize um, playing to a, an audience, you know, and if they could sing it back to me, then I knew it was going to be a good line, you know? Um, so yeah. that's, that's the sort of method that I, that I uh, used. And uh, nowadays, you know, um, it's, I realized that, uh, writing music is it's such a, a muscle you know you really do need to do it every day try and write a line at least a paragraph um which is a, a hobby that i'm trying to build up at the moment uh it's helpful you know for whenever you feel like you're suffering from writer's block or something like that you know you just do something get something down on the paper express create in any way um so that's, that's what I'm trying to do at the moment, especially in lockdown when we can't play too many live shows, but when we can, I do solo shows. Um, I play with a band in Newcastle called Glover's Lane. Um, it's, you know, a, a originals uh, act there. So we, we all write um, 
songs and then we bring them together collectively and and work something out workshop them together and occasionally uh my dad and i do a father-son uh duo uh, called awesome. the mcleans which is great that's lots of fun it's pretty cool to be able to look across the side and see it's him and i'm sure it's the same for him too uh and we have yeah loads of fun we go to tamworth we've been on a, a tour down to tasmania we didn't know anyone there but we just went with a van and uh and the two of us and had a ball sounds wholesome <laughs> so much yeah um and yeah music for me is definitely about personal experience um i really enjoy also developing a character and putting myself in someone else's shoes writing from that perspective um but the the songs which i i have on an ep that's not yet released but it will come out soon uh, i've been saying that for 10 years i know but <laughs> I will do it soon. Um, I guess uh, I can recall one of the lines from there from a song called Glossolalia, which is to speak in tongues. It's about, um, I wanted to write a love song without saying the word love pretty much and um, reflected on uh, what was around me. And I was looking out uh, around at the trees, you know, and I said, um, the, the leaves bend in the trees, and mimic, mimic words that you speak to me, you know, I, what I meant by that is that uh, communication happens, not just verbally, you know, it happens through all senses and all experiences from, for us, but also, you know, it's just to make people aware that, uh, that there's life around us, you know, even that we can't experience with our senses that we're, we've been given, you know, and we still need to respect that. And I guess that can be drawn to us having a respect for, things that we can't see underneath the ground too. You know, there's more life under there than there is on the surface anyway. <laughs> How crazy. Oh, that is so good. And, uh, and, and, you know, soul lovers who are listening to this right now, I just want everyone to just stop and think to say, like, you don't need access to land. You don't need to be, you know, in a space where you have to physically be in, you know, on soil. Like this is this the reason why I wanted to speak to you so much is because I love the fact that you're educating people through music, through a different medium um, and, you know, it doesn't matter what your talent is, you can dig deeper into our soils and give it, you know, life and voice and, and highlight that to, to everyone. <clears throat> Has everyone in your inner circle gotten as excited about soil as what you have? <laughs> oh, I bet you they're over me talking about composting and soil on the Zoom chats at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you see all my uh, friends the same. <laughs> I think I've just got new friends. <laughs> good, good plan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still keep them around, of course. And, um, try and get them, you know, enthusiastic about managing things differently in their household. I know a lot of my friends now have a little compost caddy on the, on mm -hmm. the bin and I, it's become a bit of a, uh, a gift where I, I make up a, a wheelie bin, a worm farm for them, you know, um, yeah. I've given that to a few people too. <laughs> Here's a bin. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. I try my best to wrap it up. <laughs> I love that, you know, and, and that's, you know, that's the importance is that it doesn't matter what skill or talent or hobby you have. There is a way that we can bring that conversation of soil uh, to the front of the conversation, you know, whether it be art, music, you know, education, learning, making videos, being an influencer, uh, yeah. we can all help this narrative of understanding how amazing our wonderful world of soil is and, uh, and give it, give it a voice. And that's one of the reasons why this podcast exists is to, you know, just show people that. And so people can hear that there are a lot of different creative ways that we can um, make the world a better place for us and for the future generations. Yeah. Um, have you always been connected to nature like this? Ooh, I think so. You know, I think, I think I was, uh, you know, I was born in 1995 and I grew up without a, a phone in my hand um what <laughs> how did you survive <laughs> <laughs> i i broke you know many bones climbing trees or riding bikes and things like that you know i i lived lived on a bush block um and was always chasing bush turkeys or something like that uh and i just loved exploring um it wasn't for any purpose other than that you know i was just to see what was around um you know, I saw snakes, saw spiders, saw everything mm. like that. And it was really re rewarding too. Um, and lots of, you know, lessons hidden in there too, you know, um, that you don't realize that's what you were learning until you, you, you learn your research about it later on or 
um, see it from a different angle, I guess. But for me, yeah, uh, I was always surrounded by bush, uh, enthusiastic about getting to the top of a tree <laughs> and uh, playing with a stick or a leaf, you know, what didn't matter what it was. Mm, the good old days, eh? <laughs> Yeah. So in my age too. <laughs> but uh, this, is, this is what I love. You know, it wasn't very long ago that the internet didn't exist or it's kind of emerging and was like a new new thing. And uh, it's funny how quickly things can change and, and can be forgotten. And that's why, you know, keeping those conversations and those stories about, our, you know, the grassroots and how the world operates um, is really important because, you know, all these tech and all these solutions and all these um, innovations, things to get faster and bigger and stronger. And, and, you know, there's no delayed gratification anymore. And especially when it comes to growing and soil, um, you know, it's everyone wants the instant biggest, ripest <laughs> tomato and one little bruise on it and it's rejected, you know, it's no good. And like I grew up in an Italian culture and we lived off the garden and, you know, it was very much like everything was used. Everything was recycled and, you mm. know, in the shed, everything was in jars of jam and things. Yeah. And you'd open up tins of biscuits to find that it was actually now a sewing kit. And, you know, that's, everything had a you know multi-life purpose and now everything's just throw away. So um, that's it. you'd be a patient man for it too, I bet. Uh, you know, I guess because I kind of fell in that tech startup world, you know, I got on the internet early, I built websites and I, I fell into that hustle culture, you know, and I, I, I kind of, you know, yeah, it's been really interesting to see the transparency of like how I've acted in the past. You know, I, I get angry sometimes thinking I was one of those people that was like, sleep, who needs sleep? I'll sleep when I'm dead. You know, I've got to hustle and build a business <laughs> and da, da, da. now I'm just like, mm, no, that's definitely not the new way. It's like slow, steady, win the race. And it's not even a race to win, but it's like just realizing that rest is important. Rejuvenation is important. And our landscape needs that as well. You know, in holistic management and understanding how nature works, rest in a pasture um, is really important, you know, letting the yeah. microbes, letting the grasses, letting the biodiversity come back naturally. But the system has pushed people about output, more cattle, more corn, more soy, more everything. And, you know, it's not, and then, you know, we, the yields drop and you put more chemicals on it because that's meant to help the, 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 the problem. And it's not solving the problem. It's just managing it, you know, um, and delaying the inevitable, which we're now starting, uh, to see, you know, um, so yeah, yeah really interesting. So what keeps you hopeful? Like what, what, what world do you want to visualize in the next, you know, five to 10, 15, 20 years? Goodness. Uh, definitely not the latest report that came out or the headlines I've been reading, <laughs> but. Code <I> red. <laughs> the headline. Gosh. Um, I think what keeps me hopeful? I think, you know, what keeps me hopeful is that how, how fast something can recover, um, including us, you know, our, our immune systems too. Uh, but nature's immune system, wow, you know, that's unbelievable um, how, how quickly that can recover when it's, when it's treated properly or given time to do it, you know, just given time to rest. Um, and I think uh, that hopefully we might not be given a choice but to have to slow up a bit um, and I mean, we already saw it, you know, last year we, we were forced to, to stay home and, and stop, literally stop, stay inside. And we saw that, you know, the sky is clear, literally the sky is clear. Um, and for, I, I'm not sure of what impact that had on the, the whole scene of things, but for the, hopefully that was enough for, for people just to look outside and say, wow, you know, that's, I haven't seen that. I haven't had that view before I've lived here for 20 years, but I haven't had that view before that has to be related. Surely it has to be related. Um, and that definitely keeps me hopeful, I think. And just the, I, I really believe in killing them with kindness. You know, I think <laughs> just be kind, be kind. Um, and, 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 and show, you know, treat others how, how you like to be treated too, you know, including uh, ones that aren't, that aren't human. <laughs> yes, that's right. And yeah, that's a hundred percent right. And it's so interesting how, you know, slowing down and observing. And, and like you said, like people saw views of mountains that they'd never seen before because it was always smog or fog or, you know, it wasn't a clear view. And now when you've seen that, you go, wow, look what's possible, you know, and, and, people working from home and realizing, oh, maybe my job can be done from home 80% of the time. It doesn't have to be all the time, but what does that do in the grand scheme of things when you've got less people driving, parking cars, you know, taking transport, 
uh, it does definitely, you know, is definitely a nice way to think of, you know, the the hopefulness that can come from an event like this as bad as it has, has been and, and affected economies and, and shaking the things up, but maybe it's the shake that we needed. You know? Yeah. It's um, definitely shaken us back to how important community is too. I think, nice. um, especially here on the central coast, you know, more than half of the population originally traveled for work and now not so much. Um, so ha having a, a bigger audience to, to sort of speak out to and say, look, this is what, we're doing here, come and be a part of it. Uh, we're right on your doorstep. You know, there's different ways to, to access uh, what you need, especially when it comes to food. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, community, a massive part, you know, bringing communities back closer together. Um, and uh, it's, it's nice to see that happening. And uh, especially with the projects that you have with your community garden, and it's inspired me to get involved in a community garden here in South Yarra. Um, you know, being in a bit of a concrete jungle, it's very hard to find land, <laughs> people who can cooperate, you know, so those challenges have been interesting and council is, you know, finally found a side and we're kind of workshopping on that. So all that That's came fantastic. because of lockdown, you know, the whole working group of um, this community garden in, in South Yarra came because of lockdown, you know, the people yeah. jumped on a group and asked, is anyone interested in starting a community garden? And they got together and built this working group. And, and so it's really nice to see that unfold. People had more time to think about these things and put proposals together and, and plans and, 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 and hold on to that hope that one day a magical community garden could exist in a, you know, city like South Yarra. So it's really exciting that these projects have come um, to light. Incredible. Um, so yeah, incredible. I want to ask our signature question. So are you ready to become the voice of our soils? <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> Excellent. So if you were the soil and if you could embody being the soil, what wow. would you say to us on the planet? Goodness. I, I, I feel like I already am, am part of the soil. I, I already am um, an embodiment of the soil. <laughs> I really, you know, I wish we, that we had a light switch we could turn on that showed us exactly what, you know, we were made up of um, and all the different microbes that live on us because uh, it would freak a lot of us out too. But what would I say? Um, I would say, you know, <laughs> just treat me, treat, treat me nicely, really. Um, Hmm. I think I think I'm 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 pausing so much because whatever the soil would say would be so wise <laughs> that it would be, you know, have so much meaning collected in in two or three words or a sentence. You know, um, I I would it wouldn't matter what what I would say, but I would hope that you would listen. Yes. That's interesting. That being a common answer um, for this question is that whole listening component, you know, because even though it doesn't have a voice, it's got so many telltale signs. You can see it, you can smell it, you can touch it. It's got texture. Uh, there is a lot of observation that can happen from soil, even though it doesn't have a voice. And I think that's a really uh, important distinction is that we need to listen to the soil, whether that be its color, its texture, its smell, you know, some people are game enough to taste soil, and <laughs> understand the taste profile, you know, and uh, this thing that's been dirty and wrong and germy and don't touch it, you know, has been mistreated for so long because it is actually full of life and microbes and really good for our gut health and the links that are coming between the biome in our body and on, our, in, on us and then the links between soil is so similar, but no one's yeah. ever researched this because out of sight, out of mind, who cares? Let's name all the stars and look up, but let's not name anything that's below the ground, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, yeah I think that would definitely come back to, to just listening, you know, to what, whatever it was, um, just be open-minded and consider it and, and really listen. Love that. So it's been absolutely lovely chatting to you. And I think, you know, there's going to be a lot more uh, collaboration that I think I'd love to be, you know, an advocate of your music and play it a lot more. And uh, we will give the listeners a little bit of a sneak peek at the end of this episode. So stick around to the end for the little bonus snippet. Uh, Woody has been kind enough to send me a sample and we'll attach it at the end of the podcast as a little bonus for everyone. But how can people hang out with you more, Woody? Like I know you've got a couple of different spaces you hang out with online, social, physically. Um, how can people hang around with your amazing, beautiful energy? Yeah. Um, 
all the soil lovers can find me uh, in person at Swamp anytime on the Central Coast uh, if you're around that area. And if not, then I'm always open for a chat uh, or you can follow what I'm doing on uh, Woody McLean is my, my music handle there um, with an IE and a double C. And uh, my dirty page is MC Microbe. That's where you'll find all things about composting um, and, and agriculture and, and what I'm doing at the community garden again too. Yeah. Excellent. That's where we get our hands dirty. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's where the party is. <laughs> all, lovers, all those links will be around the video or on the show notes. So if you're following along on our podcast, uh, then definitely go and check out everything that Woody is doing. And uh, I would, yeah, yeah, just really encourage. And do you have like a bit of a gig sheet or like a list of where you're performing? Is that a big thing for you and the band at the moment or not uh, yet? Not, not at the moment, too, not too much uh, is on there. <laughs> but I, we have just booked some gigs for the Tamworth Country Music Festival next year. Uh, fingers crossed that all goes ahead. That'll be in July. Fingers um, and toes crossed for you. <laughs> just before Australia Day, yeah. So get to Tamworth Country Music Festival. It's, a, it's a, really a lot of fun. Yeah, it sounds like it. It sounds really good. Well, Woody, it's been absolutely a pleasure hanging out with you. I've, I've learned so much and I, I, I can't wait to hear more of your music. And, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 we always play music at the start of our webinars and that to get people in a good mood because music has energy. It's got vibration, you know, and uh, so much can be told by, that, that, by those vibrations that we then hear as sound and music and, um, and, and transfer of energy. So um, it's super exciting and keep up the great work because I love uh, where, where, where you're in. And, and I wish more people can kind of get this bug of, uh, their passion <laughs> yeah. and link with the soil. Like I have with my marketing bug. And so yeah. it's so. the real super bug out there, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It is. It's, it's, and it's a good one. <laughs> sure is, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ray. It's been, uh, such a pleasure to chat with you too and, and connect with all the soil lovers too. I hope they've uh, enjoyed the chat. I'm sure they have. Excellent. Well, that's it. So lovers, you know, get outside, listen to some of the music, get your hands dirty, be in the sun and keep digging deeper into our soils. Uh, I'm Regen Ray and enjoy the rest of your day. All right. So lovers, there you go. That was an amazing chat with Woody McLean, uh, also known as MC Micro. But as I promised, here is a little sneak preview of some of his music. And if you wanted to listen to it more, check out the links in the description or around the video. It takes just one thought to brighten my soul I only know happiness I only know happiness I only know happiness When I'm with you Well, soil lovers, that's enough secrets for one episode. I really hope that you enjoyed all the secrets shared during this conversation. But hey, let's not keep it a secret. Please share this podcast around and make sure that you like it and leave us a review because that really helps spread the secrets of the soil. Until next time, remember, get outside, get your hands dirty and keep digging deeper into your soil.